station of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Thursday, the 3rd of October, the early edition at 8.06 a.m. in the morning, pre-recorded, uh, at least it's recorded now to be replayed at my usual time. And let's go straight to the market. The Dow futures is down 76 at uh, 42,434. That high that was made, just under 43,000 in the futures, uh, four sessions ago, we haven't gone above it, and we've gone sideways with little inside sessions each day. But what's really important at this particular stage is to see whether or not the price goes underneath the 14-period exponential moving average and drags the green 9-period moving average under the 14 over the next uh, few days. So that's where we are so far. The technicals are still good in the 9-14. But the MACD has turned negative and the relative strength is turning down a little bit. Stochastic's just gone under 80% at 74%. On balance volume is a little bit overbought. I did have a reading this morning. I mean, at the close yesterday to say that the my Chapman Wave trend gauge, this is Richard Arms uh, index, but I just used uh, two numbers on the one on the upside, one on the downside. And that suggests to me either on the upside that it's an overbought situation, that there should be an E-mini rally in the futures, the S&P futures, and the other is if it's low enough that the Dow should have a negative open uh, the following session before it attempts a rally. But actually, we've had a negative, a very a negative uh, early morning session come back quite nicely. Uh, but most importantly, it is still down. Uh, the futures are down 90. Looking at the E-mini futures, E-mini futures are down uh, 850 and 57.51. The high that was made, I should get the date right here. The date is the 26th of September. Uh, and the futures continuous contract of 58.30. Uh, that hasn't been taken out. And we'll be making lower lows and mostly lower highs. So we're going to see what happens at the end of the day. Right now, we've got the NQ, which is the, the NASDAQ futures, uh, trading down 50 at 90,950. And this is going to be very inter interesting because they all have the same kind of pattern. Uh, since the high that was made around about 26th of September, all of them have been making lower lows. Uh, yesterday was a slightly higher high, a uh, higher low, but still a much lower high. And now let's go to the IWM, and I'm going to go to the RTY, which is the futures for the Russell 2000, down 10 at 22.04. This one's got a different pattern because this one, the Russell 2000, made its high. Uh, back on the 19th of September, and it's almost got a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. It's going to be very important. The 2196 area, I would say that that's going to be very important to hold today. If there is some weakness, let's go to the gold. Uh, gold right now is down um, just one. At 2668, holding very nicely, and considering what's going on in the Middle East, uh, it hasn't made new all time highs. It's just been stuck, I think, also since the 26th. Yes, yeah, since the 26th of September, it hasn't made a new high. It is holding very nicely, but as I say, it hasn't broken the upside. And silver, and I'm going to need some help here because uh, I do have some music coming through my speaker. I'm not sure. Uh, all right. And we've got the silver down 14 cents to 31.77. I'm not sure uh, what's going to happen next with the silver because it's really just in a high level consolidation, very much like gold. So as it stands right now, there's still upside impetus for both gold and silver. And unless they drop quite sharply from here, the, the status right now is still in bull, bull mode, digesting some of the gains. I would like to go to the bonds. Look at this. Bonds are down again, almost a half a point, 10.30 seconds at 123 and 31.30 seconds. Whew, this trend line that I drew before, this is like a huge up channel. 
two parallel trend lines right there. If uh, bonds, I, it can get pierce it, but if it really closes under 123, there's a 123, let's call it 124 right now, closes under 123, makes an arch formation after that peak E in the Chapman Wave methodology back around about the 16th of September, and the monthly chart is at a PD. PD is usually what you've got to be careful of because that's where other things can happen. And the rally has stalled, but the technicals are still pretty strong. Uh, that is for bonds. I'd like to go to crude oil. Crude oil is up $1.49 at $71.58. So there was a big spike three days ago. And that was because uh, of the Middle East conflagration. But most importantly, yesterday went to a high, high, and then pulled back sharply. Today it's come back a little bit, and it's in this candle part of the uh, for a little while now. At 71.57, that's the the midpoint of the candle that I'm looking at uh, from yesterday. If the if crude oil manages to hold around about here, it's at 71.53. If we can hold you about another, I'd say what I'd like to go about an hour and a quarter, maybe a quarter to nine. It's right now a quarter past eight in the morning, or twelve minutes past eight. If we can go to that eight forty-five time frame, um, nine sorry nine forty-five, so quarter to ten. I need to have it in market hours to see what happens if it holds above. I'm going to make it seventy-one sixty. If it holds above seventy-one sixty, and it can hold there for. Going into that time frame, hmm, then there's a chance it could retest yesterday's high. That would be quite bullish. If it starts to fail, then I, it still has support, but it is trying to uh, form some kind of a base. I'd like to go to high-grade copper. High-grade copper right now is down quite sharply, down 0.06, considering it had a nice green session yesterday. Hmm, I think it's beginning to struggle. I'm calling that a PD that was made uh, four sessions ago. And that was at 4.79 on the uh, continuous contract. Digesting gains right now. And that weekly chart, 9 period moving average has actually, I've got to wait until tomorrow at 4 o'clock. But so far, the 9 period moving average did cross positive. It went green, but it needs to hold as the weekly chart. So I have to really wait until 4 o'clock tomorrow. Now, I need to do one other thing. Uh, got that, okay. Yes, nice weather up here before the winter hits. I agree. I hope there's one thing I wanted to do. Did that, did that, did that, did that? Oh, that's right, the volatility index. So this is really interesting, isn't it? The, oops, where did I type that? I typed in the wrong place. Type it right here. Okay. Dx, dx. So this is pre market, um, it's an hour and a quarter before the market opens officially. And the VIX index is at 19.59, up 0.69. You remember I was talking about this very much like I was talking about the dollar. I was talking about the 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart, in the both the weekly chart and the daily chart of the volatility index. And what I'd said is the magnet of this trend line is means that not only can the volatility index index move higher before coming back to test it. But if it sustains that move and then the nine moving average crosses positive, you've got to be a little bit careful here with the market because that's saying fund managers are buying insurance. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, early edition. Dow futures are down 93, S&P down 7. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here, early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. Check out my opening call the newsletter. And what we're looking at here is the E-mini 10-minute uh, chart. Look how important, you see this thick yellow orangey line, um, how important this has been as a magnet line. This is the 200 uh, period moving average in the 10-minute ESZ24 chart. This is the December S&P futures. And look, we just ran up from the 57 26 area right to 57.54 and this is one two three it's the fourth candle that's just about or just is bumping into the 200 period exponential moving average that means that that's very important becomes uh, what i call a magnet line it means if you go above probably you're going to have to come back to retest it to see if there's upside um, uh, propellant enough strength to push it even higher and the other thing is that if it goes down, the further away, and both up and down, the further away it gets away from the 200 period moving average, the more relevant it is, the greater the chances are that it's going to keep pushing away from that level. So let me just get this out the way here because we want to move to other areas. Um, and you can see this has become a peak D in the five minute chart, but that nine is still way strongly above the 14. And in the one-minute chart, it's just been hanging around uh, the 57, 54 level, going slightly higher and slightly lower. That's going to be important. Okay, let's get back to our story. I love to do this because if you see this replayed in two hours' time, we could be anywhere. But right now, with the VIX index, now, so we've got a number of areas. I don't want to enumerate them. There are a number of areas in the market. I mean, going from the strike to all sorts of things uh, that – could impact the market negatively. I'm I'm impressed with the resilience, and only today did I decide that we would add. We are short, a small short position, and only today have I decided that we would add to it. We've got a really tight stop, but I'm I'm thinking that the it's not so much the downside. The right now it's the upside that I think is limited. And we won't see the downside until this volatility index, which is a 19.55, already having an impact just in terms of the high that was made on the 26th of September. All those highs, that all those positions that we're looking at have pulled back quite sharply. So if the VIX index by the end of the day slips to, it's a 19.55, slips to 18.70 or maybe a little lower, 
that allows the upside action in the market to uh, unfold towards higher levels. If in fact it goes to 20 at any point, I think that the market comes back and the upside becomes very limited. And then the, the downside, I, I, I had this yesterday, I don't know if I want to go through it again, for all the different levels that we were looking at for the Dow, the S&P, the QQQ and the IWM to hold, because if they break those levels, then those prices should go lower. So in the meantime, what I want you to do is just look the dollar, had a good move, um, today so it's on Tuesday, Follow through to the upside on Wednesday, and today it's having another quite strong move. It's up 21 ticks at 101.84. Now, what's really important, remember, I drew this uh, inside track propellant line. I said, this is really important. When a currency like the dollar, which is an international currency, it's the currency of choice. When that currency starts to um, have limited upside, but then it has limited downside, and it starts to hold a particular trend line very well. And this is what I call the inside track. So I take the outer limit, the wicks of each candle, and as many as I can see that touch, and I use that to give a trend line. That's a straight line, in this case down. And then I make within like a 316, just a real tiny little channel I make, and I call that the inside track repellent propellant zone. And now it's what it's done is held that and it's spiked out. Then the next uh, technique that I use, I just want to check something over here. Um, yeah, this is, this is the one that says to me, got to be real careful. I think that for just for the moment, how we see the E-mini futures, which is down seven, it's not a big deal. If they go under 57, uh, 50, then that 57, 47, 200 period moving average in the uh, one minute chart becomes a focus. Just wanted to update that because at two hours time, it could be anywhere. It could look so stupid because it's up somewhere or down somewhere. Meantime, this particular technique where you've got the arch formation, this dreaded H, the technique I call it dreaded H because if you take out the left side low, how the right side um, handles that is gonna be very important. But if there is a bounce off that and the price can hold two out of three sessions, consecutive sessions, above the arch high, in this case, the arch high in the dollar is on the 3rd of September at um, 101.92. If it can hold above that for two or three sessions, um, and I, it needs to close, it can't just hold, it needs to close above it. That becomes really important because it says, now you can look at the left side, next candle of importance, and that would be the candle high of the 19th, which takes you to 102. Wow, that's high, 102.48. Well, that's what it says. That's all I can tell you. That's the candle that I'd be looking at if this holds. And what happens is that weekly chart at a, at a trough G, G, G slash C, um, is seeing the histogram start improving. So we'll we'll just go one step at a time. 102.22 is the 40 period exponential moving average resistance. Uh, I should get rid of this Fibonacci number. Now it's not valid anymore. i got to redo it. Okay. So we've done that. Let's look at the Euro, E-U-R-U-S-D. Yes, it's in that rectangle. Retested the top in the cup formation and did go to an E slash B right there. And that just says that all the technicals are much weaker here, but the nine period moving average was still strong for two sessions now. The Euro has had a negative nine period moving average over the, over the, under the 14. So that's it. Just be real careful because this is in the daily chart. The left side is much stronger than the right side technically. So that means if the euro at 1.103 uh, it starts to trade anywhere here, 1.096 area, that's going to be a problem for the euro. And that, and funnily enough, the euro and the gold usually go together in direction, not necessarily in price movement, but just kind of in direction. And that might say, okay, gold could pull back, but with the Middle East going on like this, I don't see that happening. USD JPY, that is the um, yen, and that's in a nice uptrend. You, that usually goes together with the dollar. Uh, Stochastic is 68. A, B, oh, I have to wait for the day to finish, but I'm almost about to call it the buy signal. Let me just, oh yeah, the, the stochastic, the nine has gone positive. 
I'm going to call this a buy signal. It could fail. It would be unusual in this case to fail. So that says both the dollar and the euro should rally a little bit more, maybe for another week or so. And we're going to be watching this very closely. All right, got that out of the way. Just really wanted to quickly do wheat. Uh, wheat has been rallying strongly. It's in leg D. That's very nice. That's one of the reasons why the DBA, um, DB Agricultural Futures uh, Agriculture Index, the uh, DBA, uh, has been doing very nicely. And let's look at soybean. Soybean has had a big group A, B, C, D, yet another peak D. Uh, and pulling back a little bit, but had a very nice rally. And let's look at corn as the break comes up. Oh, corn as well. So there's great, you know, we're looking at a little inflation here. That's interesting, isn't it? And yields are higher. I'll be back in a moment. That was a chaplain, early edition. Uh, the time is 8.26 a.m. This will be replayed at 10.26. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, let me just do this. I was asked if I could show the uh, E-mini S&P 120 minute chart just to be able to count the troughs. Now the whole idea is the high that was made, just as the low that's made, you've got to count each successively higher peak, uh, in chapter wave notation. So let me just get this right here. So in the uh, downside, so this is your peak D in the 120 minute E-mini. This is at nine on the, nine, on the 26th of September. At 10 o'clock, it hit 5830.00, round number high. So then it pulls back. That's your trough A. That's your starting point. So this on the way down is another trough A. Even though it's higher, you've got to count it. A, 
B, C, and only and D. And even that D is a, at the or just above that A. Doesn't matter. That's D. This becomes an E, and then an F. And even inside, you could go A, B, alternate count E slash C, and then F, D. Once you get to D, you, your notation is done. You can restart or continue. So the F. Then it spikes high and goes to an A minus because that fails. And that becomes trough A, trough B, trough C. And we'll see if there's going to be a trough D. There's nothing you can do about it. On uh, the way down, very often, uh, you can see a B or a, or a trough B or a C, and it just goes to a brand new buy mode. That's just the nature of takeoffs on the downside. So that's that. Next question was why BIT? Why BIT is why? BIT is, sounds like a, a, a kind of question how many, something, whatever it is, does it take to turn a light bulb? This is why BIT. Um, why BIT is called, if I can have a look at this, um, the Yieldmar Bitcoin. Right, so this is what most important. Look, here's my Bitcoin chart. Continuous contract. I've been saying for quite some time, actually since uh, March, that we made a peak F top, and from my from my perspective, I would not be surprised if um, Bitcoin takes quite a bit of a breather. It doesn't have to collapse or anything like that. Just a, a timeout, and that timeout could last until I, I'd said. I wasn't sure, but I'd say quite, quite, maybe until the fall. Well, now we're in this period, and I'm beginning to think that sometime, maybe late October, even maybe in November, this does have a very good rally. But at this particular point, lower lows and lower highs. So I'd be real careful on anything to do with Bitcoin. I'm looking at it for subscribers. I'd like to get into the GBTC. It's just a, a simple tool. Uh, this is called the Bitcoin Investment Trust. It's actually held much better if you look at the, the chart itself, but we haven't done anything yet. So I just say hold off a little bit. Uh, let's look at it together. What is today? Thursday. I'd say probably Monday or Tuesday. Let's look at it and see what's, what, exactly what's happening there. Now let me just lower this. It's a bit smoothed out here. There it is. So this is a falling axe formation. We're making lower highs and much lower lows. And at a certain point, it's going to stop and it's going to try its best to make a cup or a V-shaped formation to move higher. I just don't think it's just, at this particular time needs a little more digestive action. That's all, because it hasn't really broken. Well, I must say, price-wise, if you're looking at Bitcoin itself, the BTC, and going from 75,000, 75,500, was it? Let me just double check here, because this is a continuous contract. It's moved out 75,000. And 35, yeah, 75,000, and um, down to where 50,000. That is, that's a lot of points. I can't dismiss it. I'm just looking at it from the chart that started in the 20,000s and went to 75,000. So this is a pretty decent pullback. I think there's a little more room to go. Um, okay, as we're looking at it. Next question came in. So that's uh, YBIT, and. Um, it goes with the others. Let me just see coin because that's one that actually performs. Right there, yeah, coin is making lower lows and lower highs. Coinbase Global Inc. Next thing I had a question about. Let me, okay, so I wanted to show you this. So Amazon, see, so this is going to be very important. Look, Amazon made a PGF top around right about the 23rd or 25th or so uh, of September uh, at 194 area. And now it's at 184. Not a big deal at all. But it didn't go to an all-time high like some of the uh, instruments that did go to highs. This one failed. So I'm watching it very closely. Now, I'm putting this together with the RTH. The RTH is the Van Eck Retail ETF, of which Amazon is 20%. So this B, let me just finish the notation here, it's done very well. And that's, it actually looks a little bit like the Amazon chart, right? See? B, E, and that's an F right there. Could be an instant restart. I'm just, for the moment, I'm calling it F. So that's 217.73. Vanek Retail ETF, very nice. Leg E in the monthly chart. Leg E in the weekly chart. Whew, that's good. Oh, but wait a minute. Look at the XRT. This is the S&P uh, retail fund. That doesn't look the same. In fact, it's made a little triple top here on the daily chart. 
Multi-chart, that had to be an alternate count, G slash C, like that. That's the reason why we developed this technique of having parallel counts. And then, I don't know if they, whether it made a new high or not, but that would have been a D. I think it was just under it. So that's 80.10 and then 80.05. We missed it by six cents going to a D. So this has just been a sideways consolidation. And that's really speaking to the strength of, of the retail sector, even though if you look at the monthly chart, wow, all the way in the PC in the 104 area back in 2021, and then it comes all the way down to the 50s, has a good rally, and now it's just been stalled. So that means, yes, there's been buying. No, there has been a breakout to the upside, so we just have to monitor it. So I was asked about Amazon, so I just want to put that together. Next thing I was asked about Apple. Apple, just a high-level consolidation, nothing to see here. Hasn't broken down, hasn't broken up, but wow, it is uh, within a couple of, 237 is all-time high, and here it is, 225, not bad, considering it's been digesting gains uh, since, uh, I think it was July. Let me just double-check when that was. Yeah, uh, July the 15th, 237.23, made a peak E high and pulled back to 196 round number low. Hasn't been close to that since, so it's holding quite nicely. That's it. Tesla, I was asked about. Tesla I made a peak D, and I think by now, I, I at this particular point, I think it can take a bit of a breather. It's had a fantastic run from the low at about 180, uh, 181 or so. And it ran up to 260, what was that, 263.50, I think. Let me just check it is. Right there. 264.86 uh, on the 30th and it's just digesting. Those gains. That's Tesla. And it's just digesting those gains as Tesla. I also want you to look at the UTY. UTY is the UTY. Yeah. Uh, oh, whoops. Oh, that was a mistake. Well, let me go to the IYT in the meantime. IYT is the regional, is the iShares transportation average. We looked at it yesterday. I said there's a chance to be making a short-term top here, and that's the reason why generally in the market I'm looking at a, some kind of a breather taking place, and maybe a digestive phase should be m the most appropriate um, terminology right now. Okay, we've got a break coming up, and then I've got uh, some notes coming in here. Other things that I look at. Oh, FXI, as I go out, for this break, FXI is the uh, China large cap ETF down a dollar twenty in leg C yesterday could be a peak C looking fabulous, but now it might just a little bit of a breather. Very overbought to the unbalanced volume, but the statistics at ninety four percent. That's great. I'll be back. The gold report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Editions out, early edition. Uh, it'll be replayed at 10 o'clock. We're looking at the XLF just going sideways after that peak peaked up at about 46. Um, technically, nothing wrong with this, but and it's really important. It is a D in the weekly and a D in the monthly, and D is where other things can happen, so we're watching this very carefully. Uh, so far, let's just go to JP Morgan, JPM, uh, JP Morgan. Yeah, you see, it made that big top there that I said looked like a D. It's at, at a C, but everything about it looks like a D. Should be pulling back. Um, and G says C in the weekly chart. The weekly chart says oh, there's probably a G and a peak D in the monthly chart. So JP Morgan really kind of a bit of a bellwether there. And that's just saying upside is limited. Downside so far is limited. But watch it closely because at 209, at any point in October, if it closes under 200, that's going to say, uh oh, you've got to be real careful. It needs very quickly to get to 214, 215. All right. In the meantime, back at the ranch, I want you to look at, let me just go get to that. Bit. Oh, Microsoft. Microsoft was, um, uh, well, I don't want to go into it right now. It had this whole pattern that we talked about. Tabwave wave stalk formation did it very, very well. And then what happens is that beak, when it, especially if it goes underneath the previous uh, low, which was at 388.03 back in um, that oval pattern, um, that's usually a negative, but after the beak is finished, there's always a very strong rally, and then you're on your own, and this is kind of where we are. So Microsoft is just stalled. It is, it is not showing weakness in the sense that it, uh, it keeps holding good support. I'll just draw this in right now. So the question was, uh, when do I think Microsoft will try to tackle new highs? I think you're going to have to wait on Microsoft. It needs a little more time. Now, what's fascinating, it is, my, you know, it's cloud operational system subscription and it's AI. But the AI sector itself went to an, uh, an all time high about four sessions ago, holding quite well, hasn't gone to that missing leg D, but at the same time, it did make an all time high. So that, uh, this is what I've been talking about all the time that in this particular phase that we're in, we've been seeing um, a rotation through different sectors. So that even the same type of stock in a particular sector might act very differently to its compatriot. And that's really important. Uh, then I was asked about the uranium, R-U-N-M, uranium, uranium. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it did make a new recovery high. So this is now leg C uh, in the daily chart. Still only a B in the weekly chart. And as I, I was saying earlier in the year, uh, when we were still in our uh, uranium stock and we had really good profits in it as it was coming down, finally we got out of that and we're back in it. Um, and I just think that uranium has a play in 2024 to still be, um, I wouldn't say a market leader in a sector in, that's in, in the metals or soft metals or whatever you call it. Um, but at the same time, I do think that from the chart patterns I'm looking at, that uranium, look at that monthly chart, that nine period moving average, even with a sharp pullback, is still holding way above the 14. That usually is like a spring to the upside. 
So we'll see what happened. What is the what? What was I looking at? You, 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 you. This is um, what's this called? Energy Fuels Inc. Went to leg C, stopped right at the 200 period moving average. Weekly chart at the 200 period moving average. Monthly chart doesn't look very good. And the UEC, which is the one that we have, did go to that leg D. Look at this beautiful pattern that we were looking at. So pre-market, who cares about pre-market? You have to wait for the actual open because that usually could be a different price. But it closed at 680 and it's trading now at $7. Um, look at this leg D. I drew this pattern in. Left side, right side, price time match goes to, is that today or tomorrow? Let me just lift that up right there. Oh, it goes until tomorrow to attempt to get to 6.97. So pre-market has just done that. This is a daily chart. I don't know. This is the chapter we have inside wedge dash green target repellent line. And um, this is your left side number of bars to that midpoint equals the number of bars to the right. And if everything pans out by the open, then it would have done it one day earlier from the high that was made back July the 15th. This is a daily chart. Exact number of bars to that midpoint. That's, I love that kind of technique. All right. So me down back at the ranch. What was the question? Another question came. Oh, could I look at AEM? AEM. This is Agnico Eagle. This is a mining company, and it is. It made a peak. C. Everything about it has the look that this could be a D, but it hasn't failed yet. It's down 83 cents pre-market at 80.77. Now here's the same pattern. Oh, I forgot about that. This is the same pattern that I drew in. With that, I was that I just showed you in the Uranium Energy Corporation. Look, the number of bars from the September 2020 high of 89.23 down to the low that was made in 2022, that was in September, again September, two years later, uh, 22, yeah, two years later at uh, 36.69. Uh, Look at this. This is September, right? This is now two years later. So two years down, two years up. And we just missed, we went to a high of 80, 83.14. Is that 85, 83? Uh, let me just double check right there. 85, 85.14. So over a four year period, four years later, almost to the month. And we're uh, we now we've started October. Oh. Sorry, this goes in the sequence. It says to November. So the, the monthly chart in this particular instance goes to November. There's your chapter wave inside wedge dash green target repellent line in the a monthly chart. And that takes you in September. That would have been to 80. Whoops, there we go. It would have been to 86.90. We didn't get there. We went to the 85 level. Now we've pulled back a little bit. We've got until November to try to get to 89.23. I hope that helped you. Agnica Eagle. Next question I wrote it down here. Oh, Okla. I had this. This came up as a screamer yesterday. I keep forgetting. Oklo. Oklo is Oklo Clean Energy, also a nuclear startup. Um, I had this as a uh, on my screamer list. It's actually off that now. But yesterday I had it and I wrote it down. I've had it a few times. It once hit, uh, once meaning a couple of months ago, it was up in the uh, 18, 19 area, pulls back very sharply, pulls back to the six, to the wow, five, huh, pulls back to 5.35 uh, September the 9th. And here it is pre market at $10.10, .10, up 60 cents. I, I wouldn't have got it because um, I would have wanted it under, under 9.50 was the close. I would have said, Start a starter position date 953. I thought about it and, and then I said, uh, nah, that was yesterday and today I completely forgot about it. <laughs> I wouldn't have got it anyway. So uh, that's Auckland. There was another one that also was a screamer. Oh, PLTR, that's the one that was asked about. And the question is uh, Palantir Technologies are, let me just get that. There we go. 
trading free market at 37.41 down eight cents from yesterday. It's just stuck in range. It's done really well. I just think it's digesting gains. It looks very good. Just needs a little time to take a breather. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Uh, just real quickly, look at the E mini. This is pre market. This is at 8.54 uh, a.m. in the morning, uh, Eastern Time. Uh, look, there's your peak F top in the 10 minute chart. Failed at the 200 period exponential moving average, putting back sharply. Back at uh, the five minute chart, same thing, peak E. So this is going to be really important. Uh, just a question about Quebec was in the den. Where should it pull back to? This is a leg D. It's down $1.4089 at 36.49. Uh, just uh, if it closes under 35.80, then it could start to fill the gap. But it might, it might, it still has a lot of residual strength, so it might take a little while to actually do that. And this is severe. Okay, so let me just give you a sum up uh, quickly of my uh, situation right now for subscribers from opening call. Uh, we've been long, long, long all our positions over the last week or so. We've been taking lots of little bits off, just money management. We've started a short position at the exact high on September the 26th um, in the S, a very small a short position in the um, in the S&P. Uh, this morning we've just added to that, uh, so I'm looking at this not so much as a, a really sharp pullback. I'm looking at this as a digestive phase, but I think the upside now is extremely limited, and we should start to see at least lower lows and lower highs. That doesn't tell you how deep it is. I'm just saying as protection, I, th I want to be able to play the downside right now. Um, but in the meantime, uh, what we're looking at in terms of the VIX index, just make it as simple as possible. It is pretty high right now, so uh, uh, trading at 90.80. Uh, 
if at any point in the next two days, it actually starts to trade and hold for about two hours in the 20.30 area, that's going to put a lot of selling pressure. But the fact that the market is kind of ignoring that it's a big jump right now, that's impressive. It means that it may, it's maybe fun buying end of the month, beginning of the month, doesn't matter. I'm thinking that this is a digestive phase that could be unfolding, but it's become very selective. Certain areas are doing very well. And other areas, I think, are due for a bit of a breather. I'm going to be handing you over to uh, uh, Tommy O'Brien for his morning market kickoff. If this is the replay uh, that you're listening to, I'll be handing over to Steve Rose and all the rest of the programming coming up. Meantime, uh, have a wonderful day. And uh, I just think a little careful out there. And remember the Bitcoin, I'm just watching that. It isn't ready, I don't think yet. They have a bounce. It's just been making lower lows and lower highs. It's just taking a digestive phase. All right, have a great day. <laughs>